Jeffrey's chief market strategist, David Zervos, joins us. Always good to have you, particularly on a day like this one. Uh, David, just give me your take on the on the CPI print and the market reaction. You know, I, I guess there's disappointment, but at the end of the day, I, I kind of like the market reaction, David. I, I like the fact that the curve's inverting. I like the fact that, as Sarah was talking about, long-term inflation expectations are remaining anchored, so things like the five-year, five-year break-evens aren't really moving. Uh, and people are adjusting the timing of these rate cuts, these what I like to call victory cuts. Victory's still a little bit elusive, and the cuts will come a little bit later. And I do think... David, it comes down to some of the things we've been talking about uh, on these sessions that we've had over the last year or so, that policy really isn't as restrictive as people think it is. And there, the, there's a lot of folks at the Fed still trying to figure it out, the market trying to figure it out. I go back to my, my thesis, which has been that the balance sheets at these central banks are still highly accommodative, adding a lot of liquidity and socializing a lot of losses when rates rise. So I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I certainly feel like some vindication on the idea that policy is just not as restrictive as a five and a quarter to five and a half percent rate would might suggest based on the long term history. Right. So based on that and this print we got today, I know you were not one of those looking for four or five or even six rate cuts in 2024. But are you looking for any, let's call it in the back half of the year? So I've, I've made a very clear statement to our clients to start the year that it's not about how many or when, it's just about ability, which means that if things get messy, a bunch of data starts to turn sour and turn negative, both inflation and growth, I think they have the ability to cut, and that wasn't in play uh, over the last couple of years. So that Fed put is there. Maybe today the Fed puts a little less uh, powerful because they're going to be thinking, oh, well, the inflation's a little sticky. But I think we've come a long way and we should still celebrate the almost 600 basis points of disinflation that's occurred over the last two years. Uh, hopefully that's not transitory. Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's uh, it's it's more in the I'm more in the yelling camp. Uh, but who knows? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, I don't want to base my views on that. I want to base my views on the fact that that really where we sit today is a place where the Fed has accomplished a lot and has credibility. What the market's telling you today with the moves, particularly in fixed income, and to some extent the equities aren't really that bad, we're still at 7% for the year, is that it's just going to take a little bit more time, but the Fed's commitment to anchoring long-run inflation expectations has never been stronger. I do wonder, David, if we're in this, this cycle where easier financial conditions are making it harder to fight inflation. If you look at housing, for instance, you know, we, we've, we saw rates come down as the Fed, as the market got really excited about Fed cuts, and that stimulated some more housing demand and housing activity and all this optimism in the stock market and, and the bond market. And so it might make it hard to, to cut for the Fed just because these financial conditions will go easy. What do you think? Is there a link? I think you're right. I think a lot of the financial conditions are easier than we thought. I think a lot of what has transpired with the Fed's balance sheet and kind of immunizing Wall Street from a lot of the traditional losses that would have uh, on their mortgage books and on other books because they owned a lot of these securities, I think that helps with financial conditions. So I think our financial sector is in incredible shape. And that's been a stimulus, even as rates went higher. So I think there's a lot of effects Sarah, that we still don't understand, that we don't process fully from 15 years of running extraordinarily large balance sheets at central banks. You know, we still have 7.6 trillion uh, of assets on the Fed balance sheet, 8 trillion on the ECB balance sheet, 6 on the BC BOJ balance sheet. I mean, I, I just, I continue to think our efforts as economists need to center on that and think about what that means for stimulus, because clearly something's not right. 550 basis points in a normal historical setting would have knocked the economy down a little bit more than this. And it just hasn't. It's just continued to accelerate, even while inflation has come down pretty markedly over the last two years. So I think a lot of soul searching for economists has to happen. A lot of rethinking of Phillips curves and rethinking of models on, you know, how interest rates really transmit themselves through the financial system, what you're talking about, financial conditions, but more broadly into the economy as a whole. It's been an amazing story for two years, and, and we need to better understand, I think, what the holistic level of policy restrictiveness is 
balance sheet and rates included in both, not just focusing on rates.